हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन आवर लाइव्स ईच वन ऑफ अस माइट हैव वन प्राइमरी रोल टू प्ले एज अ डेजिग्नेटेड रोल टू प्ले फॉर एग्जांपल इनकम जनरेशन फॉर द फैमिली दैट माइट बी द प्राइमरी रोल पर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी परफॉर्म वेरियस अदर फंक्शंस और रोल्स फॉर एग्जांपल इन द फैमिली माइट बी हेल्पिंग विद द हाउस होल्ड शोर्स और मे बी इन द किचन और इन द सोसाइटी इन द रेजिडेंशियल एरिया as a secretary of the society something like that you know so various other roles which are which are not secondary by any means they are equally important but there is a primary role and then the other roles similarly in the organ systems also in the body uh, each organ system has a designated role a uh, one designated primary function but it also performs other functions for example respiratory system lungs they have the respiratory function obviously but uh they also perform various other non respiratory functions uh, kidney kidney performs non excretory functions in addition to its major uh, primary role heart digestive tract each organ system uh, has this kind of a primary role and then the other roles so in this video we will see non respiratory functions of the lungs or the respiratory system in general it is very often asked uh, in the universities as short note for 5 or 7 marks so uh, let's see what are those non respiratory functions first one defense yes um, cough reflex sneeze reflex these are all defense reflexes uh, you know that if the food particle or foreign particle if it reaches the alveoli it can have damaging effects so when such particles enter the respiratory tract it would be uh, it would trigger either sneeze reflex or cough reflex if the particle uh, is in the upper respiratory tract it will initiate the sneeze reflex if the particle has gone to the lower respiratory tract then it will uh, uh, trigger the cough reflex and how do you divide the upper and lower respiratory tract generally up to the vocal folds it's taken as the upper respiratory tract and below the vocal folds or vocal cords uh, it's the lower respiratory tract uh, from the point of view of these reflexes so for example how cough reflex is triggered suppose some particle uh, food particle or some foreign material has by chance reached the lower respiratory tract then we will first inspire fill the air into the lungs then close the vocal cords and with an explosive bark that air is brought out so, uh, with a great pressure so that that particle also will be thrown out with that pressure and with that air coming out so sneeze cough reflex movement of the cilia cilia are lining our respiratory passage from inside so beating of the cilia also will uh, remove the particles which have reached a certain level then alveolar macrophages and dendritic cells dendritic cells are immune cells so antigen recognition if some antigen has entered the alveoli uh, even after such defenses then uh, antigen presentation antigen recognition and presenting them to suitable cells and then uh, degradation of that this is all performed by the alveolar macrophages and the dendritic cells so that's the defense role of the respiratory system next speech <clears throat> you know uh speech has got two parts central speech apparatus is the uh, speech areas of the brain uh there the words will be decided what is to be spoken that will be decided there then the broca's areas of of speech the motor uh, area it will send signals to the peripheral speech apparatus peripheral speech apparatus includes the lungs the vocal cords and the organs of the oral cavity now here execution of speech will take place in two steps what are those two steps a phonation that is production of the sound so uh, expired air as it is coming out it puts the vocal cords into vibrations and this generates the sound now this sound as it is coming out through the oral cavity it needs to be converted into a certain letter and for that the second step articulation organs of the oral cavity are articulated in a certain manner to convert that sound into a spoken letter or spoken word for example if we have to say p 
lips have to be articulated in a certain manner so that the sound converts into that P. So P, C, T uh, or all the spoken letters and words are generated like that. So speech, another function. Water balance. Uh, I would not rate it that highly, but nevertheless, it is a function. Look, there is something called as insensible water loss from our body. Uh, insensible means the one which cannot be seen apparently. Uh, for example, water loss into the urine, water loss from the digestive tract, these can be measured easily. They are very apparent. But there is something called as insensible water loss in the range of 700-800 ml every day. Half of that is via expired air. When we, expired, uh, when we exhale the air out, some of the water in the gaseous state, the water vapors are also lost out. And in this manner, we will lose about 350 to 400 ml every day. Remaining half is via skin, loss via skin. So that's an uh, insensible water loss. And in that manner, uh, there is some role in the water balance. Next, air conditioning. Yes, uh, look, the air that we inspire it is, uh, it, it's having the uh, environmental temperature and it needs to be brought to the body temperature. That role is played by our respiratory passages, uh, particularly warming of the air. It's very necessary because uh, then it will have a proper diffusion from the alveoli and also humidification of air. Very important because, uh, you know, if the air is very dry, and such dry air reaches the lower respiratory patches, small airways and alveoli, then this dryness uh, may lead to mucus plugging of the uh, lower airways and it will have uh, disastrous con consequences. And therefore, air gets humidified in the uh, upper respiratory passage or generally the respiratory passage. Water molecules are lining the respiratory passage from inside. So when we inspire the air, these water molecules will evaporate and that is how air will be humidified. So that's another function. Next, olfaction. Obviously, I mean, those olfactory chemicals, olfactants, they are deposited in our nose uh, by, by virtue of inspired and expired air. So in that sense, uh, in olfaction also, a role is played. Next, removal of small um, uh, emboli from the circulation. There are micro emboli which are formed regularly in our systemic circulation. So uh, they are removed from the circulation uh, by the lungs or pulmonary circulation. Next, reservoir function. I think we have discussed this function in some other video. Uh, particularly for left ventricle, the lungs act as a reservoir of blood. Yes, because lungs are going to send, pulmonary circulation is going to send the blood to the left ventricle. So uh, how the left ventricle is handling the amount of blood and based on that, the blood uh, amount to be sent into the left ventricle, that is uh, determined by the lungs and the pulmonary circulation. So that's one role. And apart from that, you know, about 15 to 18% of the total blood volume is present in the lungs at any given point of time. So uh, that's a huge amount. And therefore, if some other organ system temporarily requires an extra blood flow, lungs can divert our uh, its own blood to that organ system. So in that sense, it plays the reservoir function. And last, but I think from the Marx point of view, most important is the endocrine and metabolic function. We as examiners, when we correct the papers and if this is the question, this is the answer, we will look for this particular function. So don't miss it. Let's see, uh, lungs will synthesize some substances and use them locally or it will synthesize the substances and release them into the circulation. Some substances are removed from the circulation. So all these types of uh, functions. Let's see, synthesized and used locally. Surfactant, you know, type 2 pneumocytes, they make use of uh, the DPPC and other phospholipids and apoproteins to manufacture the surfactant. So it's a metabolic function. Uh, and surfactant, you know, it lowers the surface tension so that the alveoli can expand easily. 
then uh, synthesized and released into the circulation instead of using locally it's released into the circulation uh, prostaglandins calicrin histamine these are the most important substances released into the circulation then next removed from the circulation yes partially or completely removed from the circulation uh, prostaglandins serotonin acetylcholine noradrenaline they are partially or completely removed from the circulation uh, by the lungs and pulmonary circulation and finally the most important i have kept in the end activation of angiotensin 2 yes uh, there is a story that goes that uh, ace inhibitors is a category of drugs used in hypertension and uh, the, the pharma companies developed ace inhibitors they were brought into the market and then the side effect of those ACE inhibitors that is cuff was found out after it was released into the circulation. Partly the reason was that ACE enzyme is released in the lungs. That's partly the enzyme, uh, partly the reason. Uh, the other part is because there is inactivation of bradykinins. So let's see ACE enzyme synthesis. Now where exactly in the lungs? Well, uh, capillaries, so, uh, vessels in the lungs, they are lined with endothelial lining and those endothelial cells lining the pulmonary vessels, they are known to synthesize this enzyme ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. So whenever the blood volume and blood pressure is less, low, uh, renin from the kidney will come into action and then it will form angiotensin 1, which is a decapeptide. This angiotensin 1 in the general circulation, when it goes through the lungs, ACE, which is synthesized in the lungs, angiotensin converting enzyme, it will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, which is an octapeptide. Now, this angiotensin 2 has an important role to play. Angiotensin, blood vessel tension means vasoconstriction it's a very potent vasopressor vasoconstrictor agent what angiotensin 2 okay which is formed by the action of ace which is uh, secreted in the lungs apart from that ace enzyme also uh, has uh, the function of inactivation of bradykinins and other kinins that's also an important function bradykinin is uh, said to have uh, nociceptive effect and other effects. So, its inactivation also is uh, done by the enzyme ACE. So, these are non-respiratory functions of the lungs or the respiratory system. If you get a short note in your university exam, remember at least four or five of the important ones uh, and last one being the most important for the marks. So, that's it for this short note.